All right. So today we will be doing type MS Word typing specific for the CS1 paper. So today we'll only be concentrating on paper A. Paper B we'll take up in another class. So first I want to know from all of you, have you all started practicing any sums or any papers on MS Word already? Any of you? No one has started solving on MS Word. Okay, for how many of you, it's the first time that you will be giving an exam online on MS Word, actually's exam. Please respond. Just raise your hand even if it's your first time. Have practiced for CM1. Okay, so for those of you who have prior experience of giving an exam on MS Word, it's still fine. But for those of you for whom it's the first time that you will be appearing for a paper on MS Word, I would suggest that you start practicing at least two sums a day on MS Word so that you start getting the hang of it. It might seem easy and it is easy. Trust me, it is not that difficult. But you need a lot of practice to get to that stage that you can comfortably give your paper online. All right. So I would strongly suggest that even if not everything, try to do at least two sums, just two sums a day, nothing else. Two sums a day, try and practice on Word so that you start getting a hang of it. Anyway, so today, first, I wanted to show you all. Just a second. I wanted to show you all a real CS1A paper. So this is my answer script only, which I had given when I had appeared in April this year. So I just wanted you all to have a look at exactly how much of typing is required and how you are supposed to present your answer. So as you can see, the most striking thing is, of course, each answer has been started on a new sheet on a new page and all the final answers all the final conclusions or the final answers are written in bold just like over here and i have mentioned a and s when i have given the final answer and made it bold similarly for the answer numbers i have increased the font size a little for the general answers the font size is 12 and for my answer number it is 16 as well as in bold so that it is clear that the examiner is checking every single question that you have attempted. All right. And my header as well as my photo, I have given my ARN and the paper along with the diet. So I think for most of you, it's going to be April 22 diet. So it will be CS1A April 2022. All right. Again, um, I'll just show you one some referencing here this is a formula which i took from the tables of course now this is a formula which most of us feel that it is something we know since we are appearing for a cs1 paper we most probably we already know this formula by heart however it is important that this is not a formula which you use very frequently right so it is better if you give references for such formulas this is a conditional variance formula expectation and variance formula so just like that i have just given a one line reference i have just given a one line reference for uh the examiner so that they know that i have from the table book all right And I want you all to have a look at exactly how much of typing is required. I, on a personal level, I prefer using the equation editor. If, if you all are more comfortable using the standard mathematical notations, even that is completely fine. In fact, uh, that is what IFOA as well as IEI have shown in their specimen papers. There is no fixed thing that you have to use a particular method. I prefer using the equation editor because my speed is adequate enough as and it's all obviously easier when you see the symbols and the uh, 
all the notations in the way we write it so it's easier for us to move on to the next step all right <clears throat> make sure you explain every single thing you're doing every single calculation every single calculation that you do every single uh, answer that you write should be explained adequately so that they know how you have arrived at that number over here also you cannot skip this step of writing 105 by 360 you have to write it and then you have to write the decimal all right because it's important you can't solve an entire equation in two steps no you can cut down on steps but doesn't mean you will use one step instead of five steps you can reduce it to two or three steps instead of five steps but definitely not lesser than that is that clear yes ma'am mm -hmm. so uh what we can do now is i wanted to you all to have a look at the specimen paper as well oh one more thing i think uh, in our term we did have mcqs Here, yeah. this one is an MCQ. This one is an MCQ, and there were two, three more MCQs. So, of course, for questions which require a lot of typing, which is more than what you can even think of doing in three hours, for those questions, they change it to MCQs. We will look at them in the specimen question paper. There are many MCQs in that. So, for example, if you are doing a regression sum, and obviously in regression, as you all know, there are so many symbols with hat involved, with the uh, squiggle sign on top, or there are so many square roots involved, and such huge equations. There is SXX by S SXY, etc., etc. So it is a little tiresome to type full questions for regression, or else uh, maybe for uh, some of the distributions if you are solving or some of the integrations, definitely the integrations. The integrations take up a lot of time to type because you have to put the upper limit, lower limit, the entire equation. And then for every step, you have to go on repeating that thing. So for such questions, what they do is they change it to MCQ. Now it is again a two-edged sword. MCQs are easy. You obviously have an idea at least of what kind of an answer you want, but then again, they are giving you three marks for one letter. So it's just one letter that's deciding a full three marks of your answer script. So yes, it's good also that they are giving MCQs, but again, it might not be the best because you're losing out on a lot of step marks also. You do not require, you're not required to show any kind of working for MCQs. Over here, as you can see, I have just written the option and I have written whatever was written along with the option. I have not shown any workings as to how I arrived at this answer. No, even writing what was in the option is not a very uh, necessary thing. I did it because I just thought that I had that kind of time and I wanted to get it clear to the examiner. You all can opt to not write it. Also, you can just leave it at B within the brackets or you all can write this as well. Both are acceptable. But definitely no workings at all. What else? All right. So I think now let's move on to the specimen question paper ones. So here is the specimen question paper. And I also have a word file open. The specimen question paper, of course, it is just a specimen. It does not mean that you will get such questions only in your exam. You all can get a little slightly different questions also. And the specimen question paper is comparatively much shorter. In fact, it's not even a complete 100 marks, I think. It's just to give you a hang of how the marks are going to change slightly since typing the typing aspect is also involved now
<clears throat> All right. So uh, now I have both the tabs open on my screen. Let's start with the first question. A survey showed that 40% of investors invest in at least two companies in order to diversify their risk. Let X be the random variable denoting the number of investors who have invested in more than one company in a random sample of 300 investors. So the first part is we have to write the distribution of X. All right. So I've copied the answer, but I wanted to show you all how to type answer one. So first, obviously, I'll have to type answer one. And I'm going to select this using the shortcut for bold control b <clears throat> and using the shortcut for increasing the font size which is control plus shift on the greater than sign all right so i increased it a little now the first part is here x follows a binomial 300 comma 0 0.4 distribution because obviously it's a random sample of 300 investors and the probability is 40 percent so now this thing, this step, you can even write it like this. The squiggle sign or the follow sign, you can find it just before the one key, number one key, on top of the tab key. You will have to press shift and the key between escape and tab, and you will get this sign. Now, as you can see, the sign is not coming on the center. It's coming a little on the top. So you can avoid using the sign because it might be a little misleading or if you feel it's comfortable there is absolutely no harm in using the sign even i i, uh, I don't know if you all noticed i use the sign as well in my answer script at some points so you can easily use this or you can write follows in words that is also equally acceptable and a binomial 300 comma 0.4 now here i would suggest instead of writing bin use the word binomial because the question said that we have to determine the distribution so the entire marks itself is for the word binomial and for the 300.4 just for these three things we have two marks so obviously they expect you to uh, write the entire word at least that the binomial distribution all right and then we also have the approximate distribution since the n is so large we'll also show the approximate distribution which is the normal distribution with expectation of x as 300 into 0.4 now please don't use the x as a multiplication sign because we're already dealing with x as a random variable so of course small x will denote the values which the random variable is taking so we, it is important that we use the asterisk and not the x. And same here for the variance as well. Here, you, if you want, you can add a step where x approximately follows normal 120, 72. You can add this step also. But it is important to show how you arrived at the 120 and 72. This step is additional, but the step prior to this, it is mandatory. This step has to be there because in this step, you're showing how you arrived at the 120 and 72. All right. Then in the next part, they have asked us to calculate an approximate probability that X is greater than 100. So first, of course, we'll have to write probability that X is greater than 100. Now, for some of you, it you all might be uh, more equipped with the control c control v keys so what you can do is you can control c this or copy this and then you can paste this and edit this as well to get the next line i just added the 0.5 and the equal to because that is what we have to write in the next step for continuity correction or on the other hand some of you might be more comfortable in typing the entire thing again this is a personal choice depending on your typing speed, whether you're more comfortable typing the entire thing. Because in that way, see, the only difference it will make is if you're typing it, you'll have to you'll just say it and you will type it. If you're doing the copy-paste thing, then you have to make sure that you're copying the correct thing and pasting the correct thing. 
and editing it correctly. All right. This is the only difference. Now over here again for file, you have two, three options. Either you can simply write PHI with a capital P. As I had said, for Greek for capital Greek letters, we have to use a capital letter. So a capital P H I, or you can even go to the insert tab. And here we have sorry, just a second. Just increase this a little so it be easier. Hmm. Here we have the symbols. So you can go to the symbols and you can search for the file. Of course, as you can see, it's a little time consuming. You can either put it in your recently used or you can simply write PHI. I think that is the easiest. And in case any of you are using the equation editor, no see this is the small file and this one is the capital file all right the length of the line differs here you do not have the two sleeping lines on top and bottom instead it is just a thicker and a thinner file so okay i will insert this and close it all right so as you can see i've got the file symbol now inside this i can copy this thing this is one way of writing it and the other way of writing it is you can press alt equal to and get the equation editor and now you can just use a backslash with capital phi the file symbol is here in the bracket. You can write 100.5 minus 120 divided by, again, for the square root, you use a backslash with SQRT. And inside the bracket, you write a 72. All right. This is how it will come out. 1 minus 5 minus 2.298. It. and we can just continue in this is it clear up to here how you can use three different ways of doing this one part now it's completely on you you have to try all three and you have to decide which one works best for you is this some clear how you have to type it out again when you will use this value of 5.2.298 here they have not given the referencing, but you make sure that within the brackets, just this, within the brackets, you use from page whatever of formulae and tables. All right, make sure you write this inside the bracket. Clear up to you? Any doubts, anyone? We'll move on to the next sum then. Okay. So the next one, let x1, x2, dot, 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 xn be a random sample consisting of independent random variables with mean, mu, and variance sigma squared. Consider the sample mean as this. Of course, this all of us know that this is the sample mean formula. In your answer, you may denote mu by mu sigma square by sigma 2 and x bar by x bar so they have written that you may denote it so they are giving you an option of using either the keyboard notation or the equation editor nowhere it is written that you must denote it as whatever all right so again here also first of all what i want you all to see Okay, here I completed my question. All right, this is where this question ended. Now what I will do is I will go to insert and insert a new blank page. 
you will not press enter and go to the next page because as I had said in my previous classes that if you press enter and you come back to that question and edit it, your entire formatting will go haywire. So you will always go to insert and insert a new page, write answer to. Again, you will control B and increase the size. Then you can just press the right arrow twice. You can either press the right arrow twice. In that way, you will simply move on to the next line and your font size, etc. will remain the same as it was before, which means it's still at 11 and it's not in the bold form. Or what you can do is you can press enter. If you press enter, your font size will be increased and the bold edit will remain. So now you will have to unbold it by again pressing control B and get the size back to 11 or 12. As you know, 11 or 12 is the option for the sizes of font size of your answer script. So now we'll start with part one. Write down the expected value of x bar. So obviously it's new. We know that expectation of x bar. This is one way of writing it. Or what you can do is again use the equation editor. Hyper capital X and then backslash bar. You will get the X bar notation. Again, you can either write MU or you can write a MU with a backslash in the equation editor. So you will get the simple. Both of these are equally acceptable ways. And I will move on to part two. Uh, part two, the question was derive the variance of x bar. So I'll just copy it from here for once. Or let's just type it again. So variance of x bar. Here, obviously, uh, I'll just type it in the equation editor mode once so that all of you know what am I typing, what am I trying to type using the keyboard notations. if you can see how I'm typing it on the equation editor mode also. So it is sum sum one two n gradients of X I like M square. Now I will, as you see over here, where is the gray box? It's for the things inside the summation sign, right? So this is what we have to sum. I will press the right arrow. I have moved out. I have moved out to the bigger gray box again i will press the right arrow and now i'm completely out of the equation another right arrow and i'm out of the equation editor so as you can see with every right arrow you will be moving box to box and then finally outside the equation editor so make sure that you start typing your uh, theory answers or whatever explanation you're giving Make sure you start typing it once you're out of the equation editor or at least the equation because I'll show you where the trouble will happen. All right, suppose I write because of independence inside this box only. Okay, now I move out of it. Now, suppose I want to backspace some part of the equation, let's say just this part. If I want to backspace this, now this box will come over here. Okay. Now this box has come over here. 
So as you can see, it's causing an issue because now I'll have to retype the entire thing only to remove this box. So it's always better that you make sure you're moving out of every gray box and then typing the next thing. All right. Square. Okay. So this is what I want to type. Now, how do I type it using the keyboard notations? Variance of X bar. Is equal to. I have to write summing over one to N. And what are we summing over X? subscript i by n so you have to make diligent uh, make extensive use of brackets again first you write sum over one to n you can use the underscores you can do away with the underscores or you can even uh, as i had discussed in the previous class the standard notation i'll just open it once again for reference Yeah, <clears throat> you can do it without using the underscore as they have done it over here, sum over A to B. So here we wrote sum over 1 to N, I think, right? Sum over 1 to N. You can either write it in that way or you can use these forms as well, where we use the colon and you write a sum in the brackets, you write the limits and then with the colon, you write whatever function you want to sum over we we'll just type it over here uh, summing from 1 to n what are we summing inside the inside the bracket we will write xi or again the shortcut control equal to we move on to the subscript See, now this is how without using the equation editor also, you can at least make some changes to your answers without going into the equation editor. Xi by n. Correct? This is what we want to write. Here we will write Xi by n. Yeah. Is this clear how we used different ways of writing the same thing? Now, of course, you can see this one is the most easiest to see. When you're seeing it, it's easiest to understand this one. This one is very confusing because here you have to actually sit and see which bracket contains what component. And this one is in the middle somewhere because here there are not so many data uh, there are not so many letters or so many numbers instead it's a little condensed so even if you are not opting for the equation editor i would suggest that at least opt for this method because in this way you will see that your working is very condensed and it's important because end of the day you are the one who has to work in your answer script to move on to the next step here it's just a two step sum but obviously in the exam, you will get five, six step subs. So to move on to the next step, it will be easier for you to figure out what you want to do next. You will not get confused easily. All right. And a reminder that don't forget to press control equal to twice once for going into the subscript and next for coming outside the subscript. Now, as you can see, the n square is outside the summation ideally, correct? Because 
sum over 1 to n is only for variance of xi. It is not for the n square. Correct? So, this we can use, show by putting another bracket maybe. We can do it by putting another bracket. Or you can let go of the bracket also since it won't make a difference to your answer. But you have to make a, disc, uh, make a decision depending on what you are trying to show. Again, for the superscript, what is the shortcut? Control shift plus or control shift equal to to get the plus sign, right? Again, I will press the keys to come out of the superscript because of independence. Clear? Is everything clear up to here? Any doubts? Any doubts, any of you? These are just simply theory answers. There is no typing involved over here. So you just have to type it out, comment, and explain. You will notice that since it's come so much to the online mode, you will get a lot of questions in all papers. Across all papers, this is the trend that you are getting a lot of commenting and explaining things. It's not theory also and it's not sums also. It's somewhere in between where you have to actually analyze things. Clear all of you? Any doubts up to you? Please respond so that at least I know that we are all on the same page. No, ma'am, no doubts. No doubts? Okay. okay. So just two more questions, I think, in the specimen paper. Okay. So now question three, as I had said, they have shown us some MCQs as well. Ident uh, X and Y are discrete random variables with joint distributions as follows. They've given us the entire joint PDF. Identify which one of the following options gives the correct value of expectation of y given that x is equal to y. So this you have to calculate. Of course, you will have to uh, show a lot of workings. Here they have shown the working also. Or if you were giving this using pen and paper, you would have to show these four steps. Correct? All of you know better than me. I have forgotten a lot of CS1. But all of you, of course, know that you will have to show this much amount of working for this question where you will show first you have to write the formula then you have to put in the values or expand the formula put in the values do all the multiplication division every single value you have to write the individual values and then add subtract multiply divide etc and get to the final answer so to make sure that you are saving on time or you're not actually losing out on time because of typing so many things, they have turned it into an MCQ and you simply have to choose the final answer. And in your answer script, none of it has to be shown. All you have to write is this much. That's it. Just answer and the option number. Here they have given options as A1, A2, A3, A4. In the question paper, usually it comes as A, B, C, D. All right. So A, B, C, D, whatever option you think is correct, you have to write that option. Please do not give an ex any explanation. They will definitely not take it into account. And maybe if your luck is very bad, then the examiner might get a little annoyed and cut marks as well. Because you are actually doing something that they have strictly said not to do. All right. So don't try and give any explanation there's absolutely no point you are wasting your own time identify which one of the following options gives the correct value of the variance of variance of x given y equal to 3 again the same thing so much of typing is required no point typing so much simply you have to write the option you can do all the calculations roughly you do not have to write any formula just do the calculations roughly or on your calculator and you can decide the final answer. All right. Calculate the probability functions of the marginal distributions for x and y. So here, of course, here we will have to 
type out the entire thing because they are not giving us any options to choose or they are not asking us just for the value. They've given two marks, so we have to show our workings as well. So how will we show our workings? <clears throat> All of us know how to get the probability for uh, marginal probabilities. We simply have to sum over the rows and the columns respectively. So you will have to, either you can copy paste the table from the question paper or you can just let go of the table. You do not have to show what is already there on the paper again in your answer script. You can just give this line where they will know that where are you getting these values from. I would suggest if you have the time, maybe you can uh, show for, let's say over here what they have done is for all four value, all three values of X, they have just given the final answer. What I would suggest is to be on the safe side, show your working for one, which means if you're doing probability that X is equal to zero, instead of straight away writing 0 0.26, you write, <clears throat> uh, which one is hmm. probability that x is equal to 0 you simply write is equal to 0 0.08 plus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.11 plus 0 0.04 just for any one you show the entire working so that the examiner knows that you are not copy pasting the answer from some other candidate or from any other source you are actually doing it by yourself and you know what you are doing all right. It's always better. It's just one line out of eight calculate uh, out of seven calculations. Even if you show the working for one, it's more than enough. All right. Yes, Hamza Moini. So, ma'am, for MCQs, we don't need to show the working. Whereas for these short, short, small answers, we have to show the working. Yes, show okay. the working. Hmm. MCQs no working at all. Short answers obviously depends on your time. If you are running really short of time then you can let the working be also but i would suggest it's more important that you attempt things better and nicely than trying to attempt everything in a haywire manner it is always better that whatever you're sure of should be clean and clear on your answer script don't give the examiner any chance at all to deduct even a single mark from what you are sure of all right determine whether x and y are independent so for this it is mostly a theory answer no typing as such is required even the typing that is required it is just simple brackets and equal tools so no special typing skills is required for this and of course since this is a determining thing you have to show it at least one example for any question that asks you to prove or to determine Minimum one, I would suggest you can go for two also. All right, it is always better to give two. Now moving on to the last question. An actuary is asked to check a linear regression calculation performed by a trainee. The trainee reports a least square slope parameter of B hat and a sample correlation coefficient R. Justify why this suggests that the trainee has made an error. So as you can see, again, no symbols as at all. It is a completely theoretical answer, which has to be typed in words. All of you must be knowing the answer. The regression slope suggests a positive relationship, while correlation coefficient shows a strong negative relationship. So again, no typing required over here. In a different simple linear regression model, a histogram of the residuals is shown below. Comment on the validity of the assumptions of the linear model. Again, no sum or no symbols, notations, anything. A simply theoretical word answer. The histogram suggests non-symmetric distribution for the residuals and therefore the assumption that the errors follow a normal 0, comma sigma square distribution does not seem valid. So again, here for the sigma square only, what you can do is you can either go to the insert tab. Short. You can go to the insert tab. Symbols. Usually if when you will practice, 
at least the sigma sigma there are some symbols which will definitely come in your recently used so sigma square and then instead of writing hat and square you can go for control shift equal to and then back again you can use sigma square like this or just for the sigma square quickly you can press all equal to type sigma square and then move out of the equation at two. If you are practice from now, you all can do this much also. That just for one 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 symbol, quickly press Alt equal to enter the equation editor, type whatever symbol you want, and move out of it immediately. All right. But please don't type entire answers on the equation editor mode. Try to avoid it because as you can see, if you are typing something in the equation editor, and you have, if you are typing something non equation editor mode, me. There is a difference in the equation at the everything is in italics and it is a slightly here. See, here you can see the difference. This because of independence and this because of independence. It is always better that all your words are in the normal font, which is Calibri or Times New Roman, whatever it is, and the rest of it, whatever equation you're typing, are in italics. That's fine. Clear? So now part three. Determine the fitted li uh, line of regression model. Now, here is a sum which will require a lot of symbols and a lot of <coughs> uh, typing in the mathematical mode, from the mathematical aspect of it. So, as you can see over here, what they have done is they have used B hat in words, A hat in words. But what you can also do is you can obviously use the equation editor mode. In that way, it will not seem so intimidating. That is the only thing. No other difference at all. It will just not seem so intimidating. Because every time, just for one symbol, you are typing four or five letters. So it's taking up a lot of space and it might get confusing. So we will try typing this in the equation editor mode also. We had is equal to s x y by s x x and whatever values you want to type you can just type the values here yeah, this is easy you have just shown three steps it's a three mark sum you can show three steps maybe if you want you can expand a little for example over here what they have done is this they have written the uh, symbol symbolic form and in the same line they have also given the num uh, numerical values for each symbol what you can do is you can move on to the next line since they, you are already typing in so many words and so many letters in one line it's always better that you go on moving lines so that it's not congested in your answer script all right now for the next part, of course, for calculating the standard error, as you can see, it's such a complicated formula and so many big values, so many heavy on number values are used. So they have converted it into an MCQ. Because if you do it on the calculator, it will just take you a second. But if you're trying to type it out, just typing the thing will take you a good one minute. If you try to type this entire thing. It will take you about one minute. So obviously there is no point that they will ask you to devote this much of time just for a one mark thing or something that can be done in a second on your calculator or using any other software, maybe R or Excel, whatever. Correct? So this, this is why they have converted it into an MCQ. As simple as that. Same for option B. And now for option C, there is a little bit of typing that is required just a little bit of typing is required as you can see again here they have just written critical value from tables i would suggest say the page number also write the page number also from which page you are taking it from the tables and mention it later at the end from page, from page whatever of formulae and tables here this is fine. Again, make sure that your final answer 
is in bold. One more thing, when you're writing theoretical answers, of course, here you have the uh, privilege, maybe I can say, or you have the option of making your keywords stand out easily. In your question paper, when you used to use pen and paper, we, what would we do? We would underline all the keywords in our theory answers. Here, you have to make it bold. I would suggest avoid underlining in your answer scripts. Go for making it into bold. It is a better option. It stand out, that stands out more. But of course, if you're underlining something, then these red and blue lines, all the proofing errors, they also come on top of it. So it becomes clumsy. It's better that you make the font bold. So for the first part, let's say, we could have made positive relationship, strong negative relationship. Maybe this we could have made bold. On the second part, of course, non-symmetric distribution and normal zero comma sigma square distribution. These two things could be highlighted in our answer. So it's as simple as that. You would just start typing. As soon as you want to start typing as bold, you press control B, let's say errors follow or oh, now I want to highlight n 0 comma sigma square so I'll just press control v n 0 comma sigma square and now I want to unbold it so again I will press control v and I will start typing it clear this part is clear again the last part is simply a comment so no big deal over there you just have to highlight everything that is important. Only affected by variance of y hat. This one you can highlight. Through the term, x is not required. This term will now be smaller. You can highlight now be smaller. As the new x underscore new is equal to 3.5 value. So as you can see, it's getting so confusing even to read the answers that they have suggested. So that is why I suggest that instead of going on using underscores and hats, at least try to use control shift equal to and control equal to for superscript subscript. All right. So is everything clear up to here? We have done the specimen paper and we have seen an actual answer script also. Yes, ma'am. Uh... Actually, uh, how will we write the, like, for example, if you want to show chi-square distribution, that x follows chi-square n minus 1. So, so uh, for chi-square distribution, what you can do is, you can use ci uh, chisq, that is the short form for chi-square, and uh, the degrees of freedom, instead of writing it in the, either you can write it in the subscript, or you can write it in brackets chi square n minus 1 or you can write chi square superscript n minus 1 or you can insert again you can insert the chi square symbol and out of all of them what i find the easiest is simply go go all to equal to chi square And I'm out of the editor mode, equation editor mode. All of these are equally acceptable methods. You can choose whichever one is easiest for you, and you can go for that one. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Anything else? No doubts? So I would request all of you to start practicing two sums a day and maybe uh, one class definitely we will keep for paper B and after some days once you all have practiced a little bit of typing on MS Word then you will obviously come across maybe some issues you will come across while solving sums so that we can take up maybe after a few days till then I would sincerely request all of you to start practicing at least so that you know what issues you are facing and what issues you want me to address in the classes yeah so thank you all of you thank you